will be um, Tuesday, November 20th, um, 2018, meeting of the Wilmot Public Library District Board of uh, Trustees. Please come to order. Uh, I've asked uh, Jenny George to act as Secretary Pro Tem, and will you please call the roll? Um, Trustee Wolf? Here. Trustee O'Loughlin? Here. Trustee McDonald? Here. Trustee Rogers? Here. Trustee Johnson? Here. Trustee George? Here. The first item on our agenda is the time for public comment. If there are any members of the public who would like to speak, this is the time to speak. Um, are there anyone here who wishes to speak? Okay, could you please um, take the chair there? And since it's, it's being recorded, if you could sort of talk to the microphone so people can be sure you know, anyone watching it can be sure to hear what you're saying as well. Oh, okay. thank you. Well, <clears throat> I'm, my name is Charlotte Edelman. Uh, I live at 232 Lawndale. I was here a few days ago with some of you. Oh, let me interrupt you, and I won't take it away from your time, but you do have like three minutes to talk, and uh, I just wanted to advise you of that. Thank okay, you. before I start, could I inquire as to what my role might be afterward? I was here before, and I wasn't, I guess I didn't really figure out what was going on, so I was made my three-minute presentation, and then I was told I could stay, but I was sort of didn't could know you what... Could speak the, louder? Yeah, what do you... Is it appropriate? Do you want people with opinions who come here to stay afterward to share in the discussion, or is you it that you're You are welcome to observer? stay for the entire meeting, and you are welcome to engage with trustees to the extent that they want, you know, they want to chat after the meeting, but once the public comment period is over and your time to speak is over, then we continue with the meeting and engage in our business, and it's not a back and forth or a question and answer um, with, with the public at that point. Okay, so after my three minutes are up, I would then not be engaging with anybody, and so I could, on no, the subject that correct. I'm interested in, so I would just leave. Is that you right? may leave or you may stay. Well, I could stay, but it wouldn't be that I would have any participation or anything like this. Correct. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. okay. At this point, now <laughs> let's just start. Now we've got the rules, uh, so that you know understand clearly how we conduct our meeting here. Okay. I'll do my best. My name is Charlotte Edelman. I live at 232 Lawndale. I've lived in Wilmette for 45 years. I'm here because Jan Barshus, who's not here today, asked me to come today and speak to the board about why the current landscaping plan is a waste of money. And so I am here to try to get what I have to say in in three minutes. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I don't even know where to start because the entire landscaping plan, and I'm sure you've all seen all the stuff I've sent to you. I mean, it's come, I'm sure it's gone in one ear, and unfortunately, from what I can see, it has not particularly impressed anybody. Uh, but it basically raises the ground. Nothing is left standing. Um, and so it's very hard to say, make suggestions when uh, the place is like a, the demolished. So now you have $1 million that apparently have been uh, put budgeted. And I expect that you'll probably want to spend a lot less than that because that, I believe, is the way the, oper the library operates. But that's a lot of money to be able to spend on landscaping of a fairly small area. So I thought I would start by just mentioning, I don't know if any of you read the New York Times or the science section in it, but today they had a, a little uh, section uh, quoting Steven Pinker, and he said, um, part of our human nature allows us to control the other part of our human nature. Even though humans tend to be unreasonable, it can't be the case that we're incapable of reason. Even though we tend to backslide to irrationality, that doesn't mean we should indulge that when we are deliberating how to run a society. So I'm here to say that I think that this is a very important time to start running this society in a way that will benefit the human race. And in that regard, uh, I have frequently sent you th uh, items asking that you create principles for landscaping, principles and objectives, before you undertake landscaping. I mean, any business would do that. You don't start 
Uh, you don't even have a birthday party without having an objective as to what you want to have. You don't just start landscaping willy-nilly without having any principles of what you're trying to achieve. And what are the principles that, uh, that I would think a library, public library, would want to have? They would include, I would think, uh, directing their attention to the prime issue that affects humanity today, which is global warming or global climate change. I mean, I understand that there are ideas where they're going to, that you're planning on having movies directed at the walls, and you're going to have seating and ex exciting events for children to experience all sorts of things and little wooden structures for them to, to climb up and down on. That's all very nice. But they may not be around if we have global climate change. And I think that in order for us, this library, to be, uh, do its job and, and be mindful of what faces us as human beings, you have to put those kinds of very nice activities aside and deal with global climate change. And that would mean, is it three minutes up? That would mean, I'm sorry? No. Oh, I'm okay. okay. I was just sort of checking. I'd say you're about to have about another, another minute and a half to go. Oh, okay. So I am, a, a say, as I'm saying, I am suggesting that the library board should say what what is our objective in landscaping? What do we really want to achieve? And I think that one of the things that the library board would want to achieve is being an example for the community of responsible landscaping, because that is one of the ways that is widely stated is to uh, offset global climate change is creating carbon sinks naturally. And carbon sinks are composed, natural carbon sinks are composed of areas of trees, areas of deep-rooted prairie plants and things like that. So to destroy the prairie garden is going to release all kinds of carbon, CO2, into the atmosphere. That's going to exacerbate global climate change. Okay, it's not a big area. I realize this isn't 100 acres, but you, you work with what you have. And if everybody takes the idea, well, it's, ours is too small, ours is insignificant, the, un, the result is nobody does anything. And that's pretty much what's happening in our society. I'm amazed that I read the New York Times every day and I see these articles about UN reports that this is a crucial thing that's happening. It's going to be determinative of our future. And every, no one knows about it. No one thinks about it in terms of anything they're going to do, except maybe put up some solar panels, because that's very ostentatious and everyone can see it. But what everyone could do, and it doesn't cost very much, is to create a landscape that soaks in the existing CO2 that's going to be up there and will stay there, because even if you make, don't put out any new CO2, we still have existing CO2, and we should be absorbing it in our landscapes. And I would ask the park district to do this. I would ask the village of Wilmette to do it. I ask everybody to do it. And I certainly ask the, the library of Wilmette to do it. So I think those are the kinds of principles. You want to retain the native plants that are already on the premises. You want to plan to offset global climate change. You want to retain certain plants like the veterans tree that was planted to honor Mr. Rooney, a veteran. Uh, I mean, I couldn't believe that this is going to be clear cut off the, how will they feel? Will, how will those men feel when they see their tree just chopped down? I found that to be a very insensitive thing. That's a, a, on a different type of topic, but it's part of what are our goals. Is that one of our goals to hurt the feelings of the veterans? So. Um, I think I mean, your time okay, is up. Okay, my this. time is up, and I thank you for this opportunity. Well, thank you so much for coming. And, and anytime, if anyone wants to work with me more in detail, I have said since February of 2018 that I am available to work with anybody from the board on trying to craft a, a landscape plan that will achieve these kinds of objectives. Thank, thank you, you so much, and thank you for coming to the meeting. Thank you very much. Um, the next item on our agenda is a um, presentation by Dan Berg uh, from um, SICKET, our auditors. Um, Dan? I want to apologize for hovering back there. I turned on my computer before the meeting to get something done, and 
It's been I'll updating say the same ever thing since. To you that I said to Charlotte, talk to the microphone Got so it. people can hear you. <laughs> okay. Uh, both us and anyone listening uh, to this uh, recording. Thank Will you. do. Um, in the past, I've walked the board through the first several pages of the report, and I was curious if you'd like me to repeat that. Yeah, I would. Oh, okay. Got one vote, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's we'll start with the annual financial report. It's the longer document. Um, it, the very um, first section, pages one and two and three, are the only port part of this report that's truly ours. The rest of the report, while written by us, is pulled from the representations of management uh, that were given to us during the course of our audit. So we're, we're, uh, the opinion on the very top of page two, where it says opinions, is commonly referred to as a clean opinion. We refer to it as unmodified. Uh, it simply states that the financial statements present fairly in all material respects. So that's what you pay us for. That's, mm -hmm. that's the, the big news there. Right below it is a change in accounting principle. We call that an emphasis of matter. There was uh, a new Government Accounting Standards Board statement number 75 that required an actuary to calculate how much other post-employment benefits liability you could potentially have. That was done, and that's why we're here in November instead of October. It took a little while to get that uh, contracted and then and received. Uh, although the uh, library district is a cash basis taxpayer, we still wanted an actuary uh, to tell us what the potential liability of former employees remaining on your insurance would be. The only reason for that is we need to disclose it. It turned out to be about $54,000. So we're not going to ask the library district to calculate that in the future. We'll just uh, make our own calculations and roll that forward. Should your materiality change dramatically in the future, or you begin to grant former employees insurance and pay for a portion of it or all of it, then that would change your liability potentially and we'd have to revisit it. But we don't anticipate that. So uh, immediately after our opinion, our MDNA is the management discussion and analysis, and it's labeled MDNA one through four. We always label it that way so that once we've written the report and delivered to to the to staff for their review, uh, once and they write the MDNA, we won't have to repage the whole thing if they go an extra page, more or less. So if you haven't had a chance to read this report or this section, please focus on this. It compares last year to this year and explains what the differences are between the two. So that's where I would start my review if you hadn't begun your review yet, or that'd be my focus. So following that are the actual financial statements, beginning on page four. The statement of net position. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, you're oh, good. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, statement of net position is your balance sheet, if you will, uh, on a full on. Uh, uh, that contains your long-term assets. You don't have any long-term liabilities being a modified cash basis. The modified cash basis phrase, that's because we put the um, capital assets on here. If you had any debt related to those capital assets, that would go here too. So we sh show the net position in the order that you can't spend it. So you have eight point, almost $3 million invested in your building here and, and contents. So that's part of your equity that you cannot spend, so we always split that out. Then you have certain legal restrictions on your equity as well. You can only spend it on the restricted for on the items listed here, audit, liability, retirement, etc. And then finally, there's the unrestricted, about $8.95 million. Um, that's the amount you have available for spending for any lawful corporate purpose on, a, on this page. Okay? Okay. So flipping over to page five, this is the, the income statement, if you will. Um, the design is like no other. It's a seven. So it starts with expenses on the left. That includes depreciation. Shows you 
the charges for services and grants that you have, and then that bracketed number is the amount that's required to be subsidized by your general revenues below, generally speaking, your property taxes, okay? So we always expect in a governmental uh, entity that this bracket, this number be bracketed uh, up there about $5.6 million. So as you work your way down, the change in net position is almost $700,000. I'm sorry. No, I was looking, I was looking, oh. I was looking ahead at something okay. else. Okay, <laughs> no, no worries. Sorry, I thought uh, perhaps you need some help finding. Um, so about $700,000 increase. When your constituents or anybody asks you <clears throat> whether you're better off economically this year than last year, this is the number we point to. We're better off, okay? If it's positive, we're better. If it's negative, we're in a less, less good position. Uh, not doing quite as well. So then flipping over to page six, we're back to the cash basis, what you would normally see on a monthly basis. And again, focusing on the, on the liabilities, we again list them in the order you can't spend it. So uh, the amount that's uh, in the endowment, uh, 37,000 cannot be spent. And then the same restrictions hold true. And then the, the fund balance that's available in the general fund for any lawful corporate purpose of almost $9 million. Okay? So does that mean the $700,000 that's 